Hi, everybody. I am Mr. Eight, and welcome to the Fast Song Sessions. And I'm going to start us off with the fastest song I know, and it's called Mary Mac. It's a real tongue twister. It's an old Scottish folk song. It's been around a long, long time, and uh, it's a lot of fun to sing. When I sing it, I, I, th I really just think about the sounds. I don't really think too much about the words. And I'm going to play it on the Irish drum here called the Boron. And I've had this instrument for a long time, but I only learned how to play it about five years ago because it, it made me a little bit nervous because it looked really, really hard to play. And then one day I just got the courage to take some lessons and I practiced and practiced and practiced and finally it, like, it clicked. It clicked for me. And then you didn't really have to think too much about it when you were playing. So what's happening here is with my left hand, I'm going to be putting pressure on, on the skin. So if I put a lot of pressure, I'll get a higher pitch sound. And if I put no pressure at all, you'll get like a low, loose rumble. And depending on where you put your hand, you'll get different sounds too. So a muted high sound here. And then a low muted sound. So you can play around and get different sounds. It's, you can get different notes really on the Boron. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So wish me luck. I'm going to kind of start out at a medium pace and then go as fast as I possibly can, which is prestissimo. And that's what this concert's all about. So here we go. Well, there's a nice wee lass, and her name's Mary Mack. Make no mistake, I'm the guy she's going to take. There's a lot of chaps that are following her tracks, but I'm thinking that they'll have to get up early. Mary Mac's mother's making Mary Mac marry me. My mother's making me marry Mary Mac. Gonna marry Mary, she can marry, she take care of me. Well, I'll be making Mary when I marry Mary Mac. Well, Mary and her mother are an awful lot together. Fact, I hardly ever see the one without the other. People often wonder if it's Mary or her mother. Both of them together, I am courting. Mary Mac's mother's making Mary Mac marry me. My mother's making me marry Mary Mac. Gonna marry Mary, she can marry, she take care of me. Well, I'll be making Mary when I marry Mary Mac. Well, up among the heather in the hills of Benefee, there I had a bonnie lass sitting next to me. A bumblebee stung me right upon my knee. Up among the heather in the hills of Benefee, Mary Mac's mother's making Mary Mac marry me. My mother's making me marry Mary Mac. Gonna marry Mary, she can marry, she take care of me. Well, I'll be making Mary when I marry Mary Mac. Well, wedding's on a Wednesday, everything's arranged. Soon it'll be changed, mind, unless it might be changed. And I'm making the arrangements, and I'm feeling quite deranged. Marriage is an awful undertaking. Mary Mac's mother's making Mary Mac marry me. My mother's making me marry Mary Mac. Gonna marry Mary, she can marry, she take care of me. Well, I'll be making Mary when I marry Mary Mac. Well, sure to be a grand affair, grander than a fair. Gonna have a fork and play for every man's there. And I'll be a mugger if I don't get my share. If I don't, we'll be much mistaken. Mary Mac's mother's making Mary Mac marry me. My mother's making me marry Mary Mac. Gonna marry Mary, she can marry, she take care of me. Well, I'll be making Mary when I marry Mary Mac. <sighs> Whew. I need a nap. <laughs> but you need to stick around and you need to watch the other great musicians perform and talk about their music and the one thing that you're going to see is that they don't hold back and they love what they're doing and to me when it comes to like uh, art music you know really anything if you're going to put a lot of time into learning how to do it you should you should love it because to get good you have to practice and practice and practice so sit back and coming up next you will watch my friend Benjamin Dakota Rogers, and he's going to play some fiddle for you, and it is fantastic. So enjoy, everybody, and thanks for listening. All right. Hey, everyone. So my name is Benjamin Dakota Rogers, and thank you so much for having me here for the Fast Song Sessions. And thank you so much, Mr. Rate, for inviting me to be part of this. So I'm a, I'm a folk singer-songwriter. I write folk songs, and I play... Lots of guitar and banjo and mandolin, and I do lots of singing. But the first instrument that I learned to play was the violin. And I was getting uh, classical lessons and learning, learning all kinds of classical songs. And then I got a CD in the mail that was promoting PEI tourism. And it was playing all these fast fiddle songs. And I wanted to learn how to play that. So I switched over and started to learn how to play fiddle. And one of the things that made fiddle, especially at the start, for me, so enjoyable was I learned this thing called shuffle bowing, 
which lets you play fast while not moving your hand too much this way. It's just lots of fast bowing and it let me play fast almost right away. So the way that you do shuffle bowing is you kind of, you play two notes on one string and then one note on the following string down below it. And then you go back. So it's You can change, change your notes in between to give it this really cool pattern. So you go. which doesn't sound super exciting when it's slowed down like that. But when you put it into a song, which is what I'm gonna do in a minute, it, it it's just, it's fun. It sounds like there's two instruments playing. So this is a song I wrote uh, a couple years ago. And the second whole part of the song is all shuffle bowing, so you get to hear how it sounds. So you can hear all of that kind of back and forth in the second part. That's you play really, really fast. And um, it's just it's just a lot of fun. But anyway, um, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I hope you really enjoy the rest of the music that Mr. Raid has set up for, uh, for this little mini concert thing. And I really appreciate being part of it. Thank you so much. Hi. My name is Sing Along Tim, and I'm excited and grateful to, put it to be part of the Brandt Haldeman Norfolk Catholic School Board Fast Sessions. I'm going to speak as quickly as I can so we can get this out. What? Fast song sessions? Oh, well, that's a little bit different. Let me start again. Hi, my name is Sing Along Tim, and I'm very grateful to be part of the Brandt Haldeman Norfolk Catholic School Board Fast Song Sessions. Obviously, I'm going to play a fast song for you, but before I do, I wanted to just talk a little bit about writing a fast song or a slow song. Why you might write a slow song, for example, maybe if you're feeling sad about something or if you're lonely, a little bit tired, upset, you might want to write a slow song that will express those feelings or help soothe someone else who's having those feelings. Or if you wanted to write a fast song, what do you think some of the reasons for writing a fast song would be? Well, if I think about it, I think if I was feeling happy, or excited, those would be reasons to write a fast song. Or if I wanted to try and write a song that would get people up and jumping and dancing around, that's also another reason to write a fast song. Now, how do you measure fast and slow? Well, we use something called beats per minute. How many beats per minute is the song? Well, your heart rate, for example, of a school-aged child is between 70 and 120 beats per minute. So if it's up at about 120 beats per minute or faster, that's what I would call a fast song. If it's down at 70 beats per minute or slower, that would be a slow song. Let me now talk about the song I'm gonna play. It's called Difficult Day. And I wrote it after visiting Bolton Avenue Childcare, one of the places that I've been singing and playing guitar for kids for a long time. 
And on that particular day, one of my friends, one of my young friends, Katya, was having a difficult day. She was grumpy, she was frustrated, nothing was going her way. So I thought I would try and write a song to help express those feelings, a song that everyone could relate to. But I thought, well, I want to make this song, a song that could hopefully cheer Katya and anybody else who's feeling that way, help to cheer them up. And so that was the reason I decided to make it a fast song to cheer people up and get people jumping around. So I hope you'll be jumping around at the end of it. And also, I would love it if you can join in when I stand up, if you can stand up, when I sit down, if you can sit down, when I point my finger and say things, if you can say them back at me, I would love that. Okay, so I'm gonna do the song, but I'm gonna stop the camera and move my chair back so that when I stand up, you can still see my head. Can you hear me down there? My name's Sing Along Tim, and this is my song, Difficult Day. I'm having a difficult day. I'm having a difficult day. I'm having a difficult day. Nothing is going my way. The teacher says, sit down, sit down. The teacher says, sit down, sit down. The teacher says, sit down, sit down. But I just want to stand up. Because I'm having a difficult day. I'm having a difficult day. I'm having a difficult day. Nothing is going my way. Stand up, stand up. Teacher says, stand up, stand up. Teacher says, stand up, stand up. But I just want to sit down. Because I'm having a difficult day. How having a difficult day? I'm having a difficult day. Nothing is going my way. The teacher says, speak up, speak up. Teacher says, speak up, speak up. Teacher says, speak up, speak up. But I just want to be quiet. beats per minute was that. started playing drums at age two. First stage performance at age five. Dad's a musician, so music just ran in the family. But this is the thing. My mom is an engineer. My twin sister is now a pharmacist. And there's me, the musician. So what my parents did, they're like, Sarah, we're trying to protect you. We don't want you to ruin your life playing drums. My dad would hire drummers, and he would say that, Sarah, nobody cares about the drums. The drummers are at the back all the time. They're at the back. No one can see them. Nobody cares for them. They arrive at the venue first and leave last. And my dad and mom would say, Sarah, don't do this to yourself. Don't play the drums. But they supported me. They bought me drums all the time, a lot of instruments. But you know what they thought? They thought that this would look good on my university application. But boy, they were wrong, okay? So why am I telling you this? I became self-taught. 
I became self-taught and grew up listening to a lot of Indian music. And Indian music doesn't have a lot of drum set. It has more of a hand percussion, such as tabla, dholak, and a bunch of these beautiful percussion instruments and rhythms. So when I started playing drums, I didn't have a teacher to tell me, hold your stick like this or play the cymbal like this. I would hear grooves like <laughs> And those were the things that I played. And what that means is my playing became very unorthodox. It didn't stem from playing a paradiddle. I didn't pick up a book until I was 18. And surprisingly enough, I was rejected from every music school that I applied for because I didn't fit into the guidelines. I got into one music school that offered me a crazy scholarship. I worked really, 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 really hard and then things just started working out. And there's one big lesson that I want you to take away from the story. I never fit in. I never fit into the programs that I was applying for. I didn't fit into certain criterias. And I was told by so many people that you're not gonna make it, that nobody cares about drummers, don't ruin your life. People looked at me and they'd be like, Psh, you play drums? Yeah, right. But I loved this so much. And I pushed forward, I worked harder, and I moved I move forward with it. And I wanna tell you, don't be afraid to be wrong. <laughs> Have faith in yourself. <laughs> it's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes over and over and over again. Be yourself, be proud of who you are, and keep working hard, and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it, because if I can do it, you can too, okay? So, moving along, the first song I'm gonna play is called Cat Boy, and it's by the incredible guitar player, Mark Latiri. The reason I chose this piece is because it has so many different genres inside of it. So I feel that this song best represents how I like to play. There's a rock section, there's parts that are not in 4-4 four four beats, there's parts on 3-4 beats, um, it gets funky, I get to play a drum solo, and I just gotta have a, a good time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy.
Hi there, my name's Ian Bell, and um, I guess you'd call me a folk singer. I, uh, I used to do uh, almost all old songs, like old traditional uh, folk songs from long ago, but uh, and then at a certain point in my life, I started writing songs, and, uh, and I wasn't writing them really to try and sound like uh, old songs. I was writing about things that interested me, and sometimes that had to do with history, but sometimes it had to do with things that were uh, a little closer to, uh, to my own life. And, uh, and I would write songs in different ways. Sometimes I start off playing uh, a riff on the guitar or, or the piano and get a musical idea. Other times I'd uh, start with a word or a phrase that I thought would, would uh, work nicely into a song and take it from there. A lot of the time though, I did uh, uh, work the music and the, and the melody uh, together at the same time and uh, one would kind of feed off the other. Um, the song I'm going to do here, I'm not sure if it falls into any of those categories. So songs get written for all kinds of reasons, sometimes to tell a story like a ballad, uh, sometimes to communicate political ideas, uh, sometimes for love, a lot of times for love. This one was written to shut up a baby on a long car ride. And uh, back when my son was about one year old, a long time ago, we were on a car trip, just the two of us, and he was roaring. And I discovered the only way to keep him quiet was if I was making more noise than he was. And uh, so I pinched the melody of an old fiddle tune and started making up words about him in the car. And this is what happened. Well, Jamie is my baby and he is my pride and joy. He's a real rooty tooter. He's a bouncing baby boy. He never does anything his parents to annoy. Sits upon the carpet and he throws around his toys. Late at night when he gets cranky, wipe his nose off with a hanky. Tuck him into bed and he looks so swanky. Sleeping like a baby because a baby's what he is. <laughs> Well, Jamie is my baby and he's getting awful smart. He can eat a ripe banana, he can let a mighty. He can turn the volume up and he can knock your papers down. He can take a bowl of Cheerios and spread them all around. When the time is right for feeding, Jamie shows no signs of breeding. Plastic drop sheets you'll be needing to catch the peas and porridge as they're flying through the air. <laughs> Jamie is my baby and his head is awful round, which is good because it bounces when he bangs it on the ground. When he isn't roaring well, he doesn't make a sound, and he really is the bestest baby we ever could have found. Jamie wants to play with Kitty. Kitty wants to leave the city. Jamie wants to pull some tail and shove her head right in the bottom of the diaper pail. Late at night when he gets cranky, wipe his nose off with a hanky. Tuck him into bed and he looks so swanky, sleeping like a baby. Cause a baby's what he is. <laughs> singing I Could Have Danced All Night from My Fair Lady. Before I start though, I'd like to do a quick warm-up. Now why would I need to do a warm-up? It's very important for singers to warm up their vocal cords. It's no different than an athlete, so say you have a runner who's getting up to do a race, they don't just get up and do the race, they don't just start running. You see them doing their stretches, 
uh, maybe running on the spot to get the heart rate going, they're warming up. So it's the same thing with the singer. They need to warm up these vocal cords and get them moving before they sing. So the warm up I'm going, I'm going to do, uh, it starts off a little slow and then gets faster. Uh, it goes like this. E -ah. Go to the next note. E -ah. And so on. If you'd like to join me, go for it. Uh, I'll hum the first note for you and then do the exercise and then hum the next note, do the exercise. And remember, it gets faster as we get higher. And as we get higher, if it starts to get too high for you, just stop. Don't try and, I gotta try to reach those notes. <laughs> just stop. Here we go. I love that exercise. So that, that's just one exercise I like to do. Um, I, sh I should do more. It's not just, you know, one and then that's it. You need to do more. But uh, just to show you uh, just an example of one exercise I like to do. So I could have danced all night from the musical My Fair Lady. In the musical, uh, it's set in the early 1900s in London, England. And Professor Henry Higgins has made a bet with one of his colleagues that he can take Eliza Doolittle, uh, who back then would be considered a lower class society, uh, very poor, um, doesn't dress very well, doesn't speak very well. Uh, so he's made a bet with one of his colleagues that he can transform her into a proper English lady. At this point in the musical, Professor Henry Higgins and Eliza have been up almost all night trying to get her to speak with a proper English accent. <laughs> They're very frustrated and very tired. So finally, she gets it. She gets it. He's so happy, he's so excited that he grabs her and starts dancing with her around the room. And then yes, realizes it's very late, we should all go to bed. Well, Eliza can't go to bed. She cannot go to bed. She has all these feelings all of a sudden. She's just so excited, so happy. She could have literally danced with him all night. So she starts singing exactly how she feels. So now, why, what I love about this song is the way it's written perfectly shows Eliza's excitement. When you're excited, you start talking faster and talking higher. So you get I'm so excited. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So here, I'll just do a little snippet of the song. You can hear Eliza's excitement getting higher and higher. I could have danced all night, I could have danced all night, and so on. You'll hear it in the song, uh, but that's why I just, I love how this song is written. It just perfectly shows Eliza's excitement. So without further ado, here is I Could Have Danced All Night from My Fair Lady. Not for all the jewels in the crown. I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night and still have begged for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I've never done before. I'll never know. Why all at once my heart told 
Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Hello. So, this piece of music I'm going to play for you is called Key Dive. K-H-E-D-I-V-E. -E. Key Dive is the name of the ship that my dad served on in the World War II. Uh, <laughs> that big, uh, rather dangerous adventure. He left Northern Ireland at the age of 17 to join the Royal Navy. And uh, this piece of music is kind of a tone poem that tells that story without any lyrics. It kind of musically uh, hints at all the, the various little uh, chapters. So beginning with the fact that up until that age of 17, he'd only ever seen six electric lights, he told me in his life. And they were the six lights of a nearby town called Castle Derg. And he'd count them every night, so they'd seen all six of them. So it starts very kind of plodding like that. But then he begins to think about um, joining the Navy and you can hear his mind start to, or I'm intimating that his mind starts to think about the possibility of this. Uh, and eventually he does join. So that repeats again, only this time it's more, a little more forceful. From there, he travels from Great Britain over to America and travels across America from New Jersey, I believe it was, all the way to Tacoma, Washington where the ship was built and where the United States had commissioned it to the British Royal Navy for the war effort. And then the music transitions into where he's finally on the waves on the Pacific Ocean. And you can feel that rolling of the waves. Hopefully in the music, you'll hear that change. And from there, we transition back toward the beginning, but this time in an even more increased pace. So it's prestissimo, you know, very quick towards the end as the adventure picks up all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, speed and uh, rapid changes of life. So here it is, Key Dive. Hi, Fred Penner is my name. It's so nice to be with you for the next few minutes. I want to share some fast stuff with you. I have, what have I, oh, here's my guitar. This is the first piece I want to share with you. I have two pieces I'm going to share. One is a musical piece with my guitar, and I'm going to be singing. And another is, oh, something else I'm going to show you. It's a little bit of a surprise, so I'm not going to give it away. And it's right here in my hands. I'm not showing you it. Ha 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 ha. Okay. This is a song that I remember. Oh, 
boy, I must have been a very young child. So it was a long, long time ago. There's numbers in it from 10 down to 1. And there is an action if you want to try it. You can just roll your arms like this. When I say roll over, roll over, you go like this. Maybe you know this song already. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> Clear your throats. Take a breath through your nose. Ah. There were ten in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over, and one fell out. There were nine in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over, and one fell out. There were eight in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over, and one fell out. There were seven in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over, and one fell out. There were six in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over, and one fell out. There were five in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over, and one fell out. There were four in the bed, and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over and one fell out. There were three in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over and one fell out. There were two in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. They all rolled over and one fell out. There was one in the bed and the little one said, alone at last. Do you remember that one? Well, it's way, way back, a song, as I said, that I learned a long time ago. Now, the second thing I want to show you is right here. Uh -huh. Any idea what that is? You may have seen it somewhere along the way. This is a piece of wood, and this is an elastic that's holding something into this piece of wood, and it's that. I'm going to take it out. Just like this, bing. See this little hole at the top there? You put it in to keep it nice and safe so it's ready to use the next time. Well, the next time is now. All right, I take it out. This is called a jaw harp. You use your mouth, your jaw to play it. And you can help me a little bit. Say your vowels with me. You know what your vowels are? A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Exactly. Now I'm going to say those vowels using this instrument. I touch it against my teeth like this. You see what I did? And then I twang this bar, and that sound goes into my mouth and moves it around so I can make all sorts of interesting sounds like this. Listen. A E I O U and sometimes Y. There it is. There's the little jaw harp going back in this little home. Ding! There's the elastic keeping it nice and safe. All right, that's my bit of fast for today.